I know that God's going to speak to us today because because sometimes we need to be reminded of certain things. Amen. So discover your real source. Mm. Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse thirteen, and then I'm going to jump down to eighteen. Says this. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, but you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. You see, God is your source. God is my source. But he gives us the power to make wealth. He gives us the, the, the health. He gives us the gifts and the talents See, you don't have a thing that God didn't give you. Mm. You don't have a thing that God didn't give you. See, never forget that. Don't get arrogant about the 10% that we get tied to God. Listen, don't get me wrong. It's super important. <clears throat> but know that God gave you 100% of everything we have. See, when we come to that mindset, when we understand that God gives us 100% and that's his blessing for every single one of us. Every day he provides for all of our needs according to his riches and glory. That he really is your real source and my real source as well. And we have to remember that and keep that in mind. Listen, the job we have is just a conduit that God uses to bless us and to provide for our needs. But he really is the ultimate uh, source for every single one of our lives. You see, I believe that, that when we understand that, then, you know, even giving that 10% as part of our covenant with him is just easy to do, right? We spend that uh, 10% doing other things, right? We probably go out to eat dinner. And I mean, sometimes our tithe could just happen in one dinner session with you and your family and there's your tithe, right? We want to make sure that you we plant that right into God's kingdom to continue the covenant right the blessing covenant and uh which we talked about this weekend it was just i tell you what i was so amazed and god moved so mightily and i believe that you know the key to receiving is giving i say that often but god gives us a hundred percent he is our real source he is our total source he knows that he knows that he is our source and champions in the Lord. That's right. Champions in the Lord know it too. That's right. At the end of the day, I love that, Donna. Don't eat your tithe. Then give it. Plant it. Know that God's going to do great things. Because through that is how he provides in abundance. And you see that in Malachi chapter 3. You see how God just blesses and all the promises that are connected to it. Amen. And uh, so make sure, man, listen. Just acknowledge him as your real source and you'll see God continue to do great and mighty things. And, you know, I think a lot of times as we're being blessed, one of the cautious uh, cautions that we have to have in our lives, right? Sometimes that green, that green light uh, turns to a yellow light. And here's the caution. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Don't be so quick to jump into things. See, make sure you do your homework. Make sure that, you know, because everybody is looking for uh, sometimes a, a get-rich-quick scheme. Listen, don't rush it. There's no such thing. Look what Proverbs chapter 28, verse 22 says. He that hastes to be rich has an evil eye and considers not that poverty shall come upon him. Hmm, Wow. Let's see, drop this in the chat right now. Hurry is the seed for regret. So hurry is the seed for regret. See, great things take time. You see, a human pregnancy takes nine months. I know my daughter Alana is in that process right now. I'm going to be a granddaddy. Come on, somebody. Jesus' preparation for ministry took 30 years. That's right. At the age of 30 is when he finally launched his ministry. See, things need time to be prepared. We need to know that what we're doing is in God's timing. See, pace yourself on this journey of prosperity because God wants us to do well. 
God wants us to prosper. But if we jump into things, listen, I've done it. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir on this one because I've made hasty decisions and jumped on things as well. And you know what I realized? That I regret some of those things I did <laughs> because I thought they were going to be one way and they turned out to be another. See, I, I knew I should have prayed more. I should have listened more. But I should have prayed in faith and trusted God uh, to, to also close the door that I thought should have been an open door. That's right. We've all been there, just so you know, right? And many times it turns out to be a challenging situation. So we have to pace ourselves on this journey of prosperity because our joy depends on it. That's right. Your joy and my joy depends on it. So that's why we just have to make sure that the Lord is the one opening the doors. Listen, we've gotten this this far so far. We've gotten to this place so far. So listen, study well your present moment. It took you a lifetime to get here. Oh, come on, somebody. It took you a lifetime to get here. So just know, just know that, listen, we've done what we've done to this point. But we need to just pace ourselves and trust God and believe God. Find the pace of grace. Find the pace of grace. I guarantee you, it will be a blessing when you operate at God's timing. Amen. And then know that as we're moving ahead, as you know, think ahead. As we're moving ahead, think ahead. Look, look at Proverbs uh, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8 says, Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provides her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. See, th this is really important to understand what, what planning ahead, looking ahead means as well. See, I call it the law of inevitable eventualities. The law of inevitable eventualities. See, if you eat two slices of pecan pie every night, what is the inevitable eventuality? If you smoke two packs of cigarettes a day, what is the inevitable eventuality? See, what we do today will determine our future. <clears throat> and our future can be predictable by the good things that we do today. If we exercise daily, eat well, then you can look for a healthy future. If you don't do those things, then we know we're going to find ourselves unhealthy later on in life. So see, there are certain things that we can control. There are certain things in our future that we can control. See, every one of us getting up every morning early to pray really continues to build uh, our, our faith right? And if we continue to do this on a regular basis, then we know that as we go forward in our future, because we're strong in prayer, because we're constantly being disciplined, amen, then it continues to accumulate. Your strength accumulates. Your faith accumulates. Your confidence in God continues to accumulate. So now, as you're moving forward, now when God's word and God's promises come your way, man, you believe it and you step out on those promises <clears throat> and, you, and you believe those promises more than the probability of what could happen. Mm, come on now. See, I believe that God's promises are God's guarantee. Mm, my goodness. God's promises are are God's guarantee. And see, whatever you are doing right now is producing an inevitable future. That's right. So think ahead. Act in the present for what you want in the future. See, everyone just wants a quick, a quick return. They want immediate gratification. But sometimes you just need to continue to plow. Do what you need to do every single day. That's right. Whatever you do consistently, you will enjoy constantly. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. This is your day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and let us be glad in it. Amen. Be encouraged today. Know that God is for you. He's not against you. Amen. You are the apple of his eye and he loves you 
with all his heart. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful, marvelous day.